Hey, hey, everybody. Welcome to another episode of Two Pixels Off. My name is Brad Hussey. I'm excited to be here with my fellow co-host, Mike Chanda. Yes. yes. Yeah, I put you on the spot. Last I time know, you waited I, for I me. Thought, so I, to see. I could tell by the little glean in your eye that that's what you were going to do. I could uh, see it. I could see caught it. me on it. Welcome to Two Pixels Off, a podcast for creative entrepreneurs. That's yeah. amazing. Friends, it's good to have you here. Really excited about today's episode, which is all, I'm, you know, I'm not going to say it yet because a little birdie tells me that you're a little passionate about this. And I'm afraid you'll Pat, jump I'm in too soon. riled up. I'm <laughs> riled up about this one. Yeah. So before we get Mike riled up, make sure you leave us a review on the show. I like saying that right out of the gate. Take a moment. Give us that review. If you love the show, we'd love to hear your thoughts on it. We'd love to see those reviews rolling in. And it also helps get this show in the ears of more of our friends like you. So please do that on your favorite podcast app. And also can't get started here without giving us a shout out or giving a shout out rather to our uh, sponsor of the show, which allows us to do this and bring you such great, hopefully great content. Uh, and that's Wix Studio. And I wanted to say really quick, they they recently announced a whole bunch of features speaking of features and benefits on this episode <laughs> that uh, are really really got me almost drooling and one of them was the ability to create templates this is it wasn't possible not that long ago but now we can create templates that we can either offer to somebody else let's say as a you know a lead magnet or more specifically to sell these templates to other folks who are using the platform. And so you could sell it in the marketplace, you could sell it privately, you could use it as lead magnets, you could use it for your own projects. Having the ability to templatize a Wix Studio site, I think is gonna be a really big game changer for the adoption of the platform, but also the value you get to add. Cause there's workarounds that I've found, but being able to just create a template and use that or sell that, that to me is chef's kiss. I love that. I didn't know that feature uh, was rolled out. And that is strong because if you look in the WordPress community, there are 1 billion different templates or themes that you can purchase for WordPress and building a library of those could create an, uh, an alternative revenue source for a designer to create awesome templates that get used in the platform and make everybody's job a little easier in the process and expand the capabilities of the product itself. Super smart. I love that. Yep. I didn't know that. That's awesome. Yeah. And okay. so today, today's episode, speaking of launching these new features, which I was so excited about, mm. today's episode is about selling benefits versus features and how so many uh, sales gurus will tell you or Instagram influencers or whatnot will say, look, you got to sell benefits, not features. What do you think about that? Me? Cause yeah, I'm you. pissed. I am pissed. I, this is the thing I've seen this and I'm like, oh my gosh, this is leading people astray because it is not to sell benefits, not features. You need both. You need both. And I'm gonna show you that the big brands do both. And we're gonna talk about how you can do both inside of your creative business and why you need both. We're gonna talk about that. I'm pissed, I'm pissed. So let's go. Uh, let's do it. You know what I'm gonna say right now? A phrase that comes to mind is all sizzle, no steak. And if anyone knows me, uh, steak is kind of the, the tippy top of <laughs> the best food out there. Yeah. And uh, if you sell me sizzle and I buy in, so benefits, right? That's the mm -hmm. sizzle. Mm -hmm. And I get no steak. I am like Mike pissed. Or if Don't it's sizzling and it's coming out and then you bite into it and it is like rubber shoe leather, nasty steak. Yeah. The feature fake sucks. Steak. Yeah. The benefit, you got your sizzle and you could have a full tummy. That's the other benefit. But the feature itself sucked. Biting so. into it and it's melting your mouth. It's uh, every, that, those mm. 
are features. The feature of that ribeye cooked perfectly on yeah. charcoal, that's features. Yeah. You had good. me at ribeye on charcoal. You said ribeye on, you had you at yourself. You had you at yourself on ribeye. <laughs> yeah. yeah. You said it. you're getting yourself, you're getting yourself passionate about the features of your steak. I am. Okay. Let me ask you this question. Do you, do you, and I know you were, you weren't little, but you were young when the iPod came out. Have you ever seen Steve Jobs unveil the original iPod and what he said when he pulled it out of his pocket and said, what this is? You know what this is? Do you know if what I, I can, said? Uh, so yeah, I, I would have been like 13 or something like that. And yeah. iPods, yeah, like at that age too, like an iPod, yeah. I remember getting my first iPod and it was like, it was a big deal. Yeah. And I think he said like, Th this has like a thousand songs in your pocket you or go, something. Yes, that was it. You freaking slayed it. 1,000 songs in your pocket. 1,000 songs in your pocket. That is the benefit of it. It is what I get. It's the thing. I can listen to my music. A thousand songs. I can listen to a thousand songs in my pocket. Yeah. Now, you could argue that that's a little bit feature-ish because there's a number attached to it. But yeah. it is ultimately the benefit. No more Discman that I have my CDs and carrying around my CD case with 30 CDs in it, and 30 CDs is like 250 songs. I now have a thousand songs and it all fits my pocket. Do you know what the features were of the very first iPod? I have a first generation iPod, by the way, it still works. It's still, amazing. I need to. Keep it I wish for the I museum still had mine. Someday. I know I have an old one in my closet yeah. somewhere, and I don't know if it's first gen, but it might be second. Yeah. Um, Do you know what the what the the capacity size was? The data storage capacity. Guess. Ah, uh, guess. Like, oh my gosh! Like, uh, what would that be? Come on, Brad. You can uh, do this. Okay. Oh man, uh, I'm so skewed because we have so much space now. Everything's like terabytes upon okay, terabytes. So this is the size of a small Photoshop document. That was that was what the capacity was. Are we talking? Okay, like, maybe not a small. It was the size of a two pixels off video file after we render it to put it online. Okay, was it like uh, like? Like five gigs? Five gigs? Yes, it was five gigs. You are freaking nice. slaying. You are slaying it. You I'm are glad I got it. that. Yeah, you nailed both of those. Good. No prep, Brad. No prep, Brad. Yeah. That's your new nickname. Get rid of the husk dog and your no husk prep, dog. Brad. No prep, Brad. <laughs> five gigabytes. So that's the feature. Five gigabytes of data storage. Okay. 1,000 songs in your pocket. That's the benefit. And when they say, that you need to sell benefits, not features, that's the idea. Mm -hmm. Try and stoke the buyer into wanting to buy because of the benefit. Oh, I really do want all those songs in my pocket. I do want to listen to my music anywhere. I do want to stick it just in my front pocket and have my whole library there. That's the benefit. And we want to get them to want to buy because of the benefit. But the features have a place in our sales process. And we'll go into more detail of that in a second. Let's do one more example of features versus benefits. And let's do it on a kind of easy example. What are the benefits of an umbrella, Brad? Why would anybody ever buy an umbrella at all? Uh, to avoid sunburn on a sunny day on the beach. Okay. S spoken like a true Canadian, scared of the sun. You're like, I better, I better have an umbrella. Okay, oh, man. what about another scenario that you would need an umbrella? Uh, if, it's, if it's raining, obviously, yeah. and you want to keep yourself dry. Perfect. Okay, so you, you're nailing the quiz today. Kudos. <laughs> so two big benefits to an umbrella. That's why someone is going to choose to buy an, an umbrella because of the benefits. They know they need an umbrella. The features of an umbrella. What would be some of the features that you could have attached you're inventing an umbrella what would be some of the features that you might attach to it i got okay well because yeah. i live in a very windy city and so we have a deck umbrella and it's a very sunny it's the sunniest part of canada actually speaking of sun um, and so we get a lot of sun and it can get hot in the summer and it's also very windy 
And so okay. umbrellas, those big parasols, when the wind catches underneath, they'll fly away uh, and go through someone's window or, you know, it's just a hazard. Mm -hmm. So for me, a feature that is almost a must is an umbrella that has that air escape on the top mm -hmm. where there's a hole and then a kind of a cap umbrella on top. So when the wind gets underneath, it flows out. It has an exit rather than just ballooning the thing up. So like an that. air escape at feature. the top is a, is a big feature. Um, and th that it is made of like proper, like metal, like it's not mm. like a plastic thing because again, with the wind or with kids and we have a couple dogs, if that gets knocked over or hit or the wind knocks it over, it's not just going to snap in half, Yeah, uh, you know, and then go buy a new one. So like quality, yeah, so unbreakable, build. unbreakable, unbreakable, made of yeah, quality good. materials. Yeah. Quality um, materials. That's good. Mm -hmm. And yeah. a he heavy base. Like I'm talking like you need two guys to yeah. put the base down because if yeah. you've ever had an umbrella that catches in the wind and it's got this flimsy little base and it just fl flies over all the yeah. time, that's frustrating. Heavy yeah. base. It's like 200 pounds or something ridiculous yeah. like that. Okay. So th those are all great examples of the types of features that might be attached to an umbrella. Now, here's, here's my positioning on features versus benefits. That And we're going to look at some big brands here. We're going to look at Nike and Red Bull and Apple and GoPro, some of these brands that are have really contemporary style marketing. They're edgier style. They would be the benefit style brands. We're going to talk about how they, how they sell with features as well. But the benefits of the umbrella is why someone chooses to buy an umbrella but when it comes down to which exact umbrella they're going to buy, they start looking at the features and they're going to say to themselves, wait a second. Now I'm going to spend 50 bucks on this. This one has a carbon fiber pole and this one has aluminum. Hmm. I like carbon fiber. That sounds good. Unbreakable. Uh, this one has a 300 pound base and this one has an 80 pound base. Huh? It's really windy here. I better get the 300 pound base. This one is made out of recycled um, soda cans or soda bottles. And this one is made with fiberglass netted something, blah, blah, blah. I don't know. And, but this one is way more durable than this one because of what it was made with. But for some people, the recycled Coke bottles might be the feature that sells them because they want that recycling green earth to be something that they're they're trying to support. And so features are the reason why we're going to choose one umbrella over another. Benefits, no sun, no rain. That's why we're going to buy an umbrella at all. And you need to have both. So the summary of my passion around this is don't listen to any of this sell benefits, not features crap. You got to have both. You got to get the client to want to buy the thing you're selling at all. And then you got to get the client to want to buy it from you. These are the two big questions in sales. Why do they want to buy the thing at all? Why do they want to buy it from you specifically? And the reason they want to buy it from you is because of the features. The reason they want to buy it at all is because of the benefits. You have to have both. All right. You have anything to say about that before we look at how some brands do this in their marketing? Yeah, uh, qu quick a quick thought came to mind, and then let's jump in. Um, I've heard this said; it's almost cliche, but it, you can almost reflect on it and go, "Yeah, that that does work." You know, when I've heard it said, you know, you decide you want to buy something with emotions, and you justify that decision with logic, and so I feel like that almost ties into. You decide with emotion based on the benefits. Oh, mm -hmm. Imagine like you get to be on the back deck and not be burnt up by the sun and having the wind like throwing the crappy umbrella over the deck every yeah. time. You go like, oh, if you just sit out there and like have lunch and be on, it, it sounds great. That feels good. You just, I want that umbrella because yeah. emotionally I feel good. And I can justify that $250 price tag because it's made of steel, it's made of this material, it's eco-friendly, it's not gonna bleach with the sun, it's got an air escape and a 200 pound base. You're like, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Brad's buying that umbrella. Yeah, 
Okay, that's a great example. Let's extrapolate that out into a whole bunch of different things. You could say, you're going, you're going to go on vacation to Mexico. And the benefit that you're buying is I'm going to be on the beach. I'm going to be in the sunshine. And I'm going to have aqua blue water. It is going to be awesome. And I'm going to be sipping my ties in my lounger. That's what I want. That's the emotional thing. Mm -hmm. But when it comes to choosing the resort you're going to stay at, you start looking at, well, this one is right on the sand and this one is a block away. This one has four swimming pools. This one has one. This one has two restaurants on site. This one has zero. This one has a refrigerator in the room. This one has none. This one has a poolside bar. This one doesn't. You start looking at these features and those features are why you decide on one hotel or, or resort over another. So this passion to go to Mexico is the benefit and then you're ready to sign, just give me the place, but the features are what get you to make that official decision. That's this features benefit. We could take this into any different type of thing. We've talked about umbrellas, the iPod, and now a vacation. We could take this into a billion different types of things that are sold from services to products, it all applies, features and benefits. You need them both. All right, do you wanna look at some examples of this? Let's do it. Okay, these are, this is un, unprepared because I haven't looked at Apple's website for a while, but I have up here Apple, Nike, Red Bull, and GoPro. Those are the ones, Brad, we're gonna look at. And if I look at Apple's homepage, after this Apple event to watch online, we'll skip that promo because it's not really applicable. Um, we're gonna go to the very first big promo on their website. It says it's for an iPhone, iPhone 15, and you have our most powerful cameras yet. Is that a feature or a benefit, Brad? Uh, that's a benefit. You think? Well, maybe- Or is the- is the benefit, if they were selling the benefit based on cameras, wouldn't they be saying, capture those, never miss a moment yeah. of your child's first steps? Or right. capture your vacation inside from your, from your pocket? You know, these kinds of yeah, things. You're right, But actually. when we say it's our most powerful camera yet, I think it's feature, it's feature selling. Yeah. Yeah, that's this, right. Because that's a technical, it's a technical feature that they're really hamming up. This is the Yeah, so powerful. they didn't even mention a benefit here. Then the, after that, they have ultra fast chips, also yep. a feature, Sweet. and USB-C, also okay. a feature. Now we can go in and, and click two different options. Explore iPhone 15 or explore, explore iPhone 15 Pro. Brad, which of these two do you think you would buy from Apple? iPhone 15 or iPhone 15 Pro, how would you make that decision? What would you do? Yeah, and that, that it comes down to features and yeah. what features are worth it for you. So for me, I, I always get the, I never get the new iPhone. Uh, it's partly yeah. because I'm cheap, but partly because I'm like, I see all these extra features and that crazy price tag and the huge increase in whatever, but like, I don't need that. I don't need those yeah. features. And this generation prior is the same thing. It looks the same and has mm -hmm. everything I need for a discount. Yeah. Ask me what iPhone I bought on the day that the iPhone 15 got announced. Mike, what uh, iPhone did you buy oh, on the day that that's a great question. got announced? That's a great question, Brad. I bought an iPhone 14 Pro Max on the day that the iPhone 15 came out because I was like, USB-C, don't need it. Mm -hmm. um, different, a little bit different camera, like they had a new focal length or something in one of their cameras. And that was about the extent of the upgrades. And I had this last little, last day to trade my iPhone 12 Pro Max in and get $500 for it instead of what would have been like 200 bucks the very next day because they had a, a promo going. So I was like, okay, I'm gonna trade that in get more for it. I can walk away with my phone right now. And what am I giving up? I'm giving up my newest one. And the iPhone 16 is going to come out any, you know, in September this year, I'm sure. So 
It'll, the iPhone 15s will already be dated. But anyway, that's what I did. And it was feature driven, that decision. Yeah. I knew I wanted a new phone. I knew mine was still, I was a little dated because it's iPhone 12. Mm -hmm. um, I was ready for that. Okay, so we, so what do we do when we see iPhone 15 versus iPhone 15 Pro? Which one do we buy? It depends on the features that you want. Now, I clicked into the Apple website and look at, I'm on the iPhone page, and are you there, Brad? Do you see that I, very top? What does it say on the very top of that page? Okay, hold on, because because I'm in Canada, I'm getting a, I might be getting a different. Is it in like thing. French or something? Is it, <laughs> I have the it's... option of viewing <laughs> this on français, but uh, <laughs> you do, <laughs> I do, 100. Yeah, okay. But That's good. I'm looking at it in English, um, and the layout sounds to be a little bit different. So I get iPhone or most powerful cameras. Uh, and then it says learn more or shop iPhone. Okay, so you click shop iPhone. So yeah, you did get a little different homepage than me. Yeah. Yeah. So I, I might not be able to give you an accurate answer to your question. Well, what does yours say on the top of your of your page? When I click on which one do you think? Any, either. I'm uh, looking for when I click on the page, are they gonna sell me features or benefits on this Apple page? Okay. On this iPhone page. On this iPhone page. So I get yeah. right at the top iPhone yeah. designed to be loved. Yeah, mine says that too. Okay, and then it goes down, you know, get to know iPhone. And then it gives me each of these, which are very feature driven. They give me a cute little benefit driven headline, but it's backed up fully like advanced cameras packed with professional tools like Pro Raw, the detail and color, 4K cinematic mode, every frame is incredible, ultra wide, flexibility, focal lengths, like like we're going in to go, well, what's the deal with the camera? It's like beautiful. Okay, so that's, this is really, this is really interesting because mine are benefit driven. When I, under my get to know iPhone section, it says advanced cameras, but mine says selfie takers, yep. movie makers, boundary, boundary breakers. breakers. Yeah, so yeah. the same little promo card is the headline yeah. is the benefit, but they're not just selling benefits and then I'm going, oh, I want an iPhone because I'm a selfie taker. You're like, yeah. no, you're like boundary breakers, movie makers. You're like, all right, but what's the deal? You're like, well, yeah. the advanced cameras automatically capture blah, blah, blah. Here's why. Here's the features that pack a punch that back up the promise of, you know, the feeling of being revolutionary with your little camera or something like that. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's what I, and I don't see, I don't get the the features listed there on mine. Mine just has those benefits. And then there's a plus. Maybe Americans on it. are just like, they're more. We're so benefit driven. We don't care about the features. Is this what Apple thinks of us? And the Canadians are like, they need to know the megapixels. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> maybe it's that. If I scroll down, I can start to see the explore the lineup section yep. where it breaks down feature 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 bionic chip five yeah. core gpu same four, 48 megabit uh megapixel camera 2x telephoto blah 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 three yeah. or five x telephoto gives you all that but i get that as i scroll down so when i hit the home page it is feature 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 explore iphone i click it it gives me benefit designed to be loved i want to love my phone that's a benefit and then as i scroll down i get benefit 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 the kind of fast you can feel the power of great battery life selfie takers movie makers boundary breakers these are all benefit 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 mm -hmm. then i scroll to the next section and it's saying a17 pro yeah. chip six core gpu pro camera system Compare 48 megapixel camera, all the, the feature, feature, feature. Yeah. So what I'm highlighting here is the is this, you're selling with both. Apple is trying to stoke your fire to want to buy based on emotion because of the benefits. Ooh, I do want, I do want movies. I want to be a movie maker. Ooh, I do want to be a boundary breaker. I'm trying to share on social media, selfie taker. I do want to look good in my selfies that I'm sharing online to try and get my brand deals and I'm a dance and, and point. Anyway, that was just a little jab to my feeling about some social platforms. But they're stoking that benefit yeah. thing, but they're backing it with features. Okay. Yeah. Let's go to another one. You can find that all over the place. Let's go to Nike because Nike is a very benefit-driven 
emotional driven brand. It is less feature driven. What is, what's the difference between a Nike shoe and Adidas shoe? We don't really know. Style, style, brand affinity. That's the real difference on one, why one person buys one brand versus another. Style, brand affinity, typically. So I wanna look at Nike's website and see where they're leading with features versus benefits. So on my Nike site, my very first section here is fly with the Jordan fam. Is that what you see on the top of yours? I'm getting Unreal Camavinga Air Max DN. So it's a different he a different hero for me. But we got member days happening. So member, I'm getting, yeah, I got member days. I'm wondering yeah. if I could just like, can I just go to the US site? I need a VPN turned on is what I need. So when I go down, while you're, while you're poking around on that, I've got this Family Days big promo, and then it has Fly With The Jordan Fam. Join us for three days of exclusive drops, special offers, and more. So in here, three days of exclusive drops, special offers, and more, um, it's a little bit of both. Like there's a, a benefit to being in the know and being on that list to hit the shop page. Um, special offers, everybody wants a, I want a deal, that's a benefit, I think. Um, $15 versus $30, that's when you start comparison of features. When I scroll down below, I have four promos. One is gifts that celebrate moms, a promo for Mother's Day gear from Nike. I have the new from Jordan, the AJ1 High OG Green Glow uh, Air Jordans. And I have the new from Nike Journey, Journey Run. I'm getting no benefits. I'm getting just a very, very sparse headline. It's barely even feature oriented. Mm -hmm. Now I'm gonna click on shop. I'm gonna click it on these AJ High OG Green Glow and more Air Jordans. And I click on shop. And now it gives me three, four, it gives me a page of Jordan brand stuff. And there's no features here other than the price. So I'm gonna click on the Air Jordan 1 Retro High OG. They're $180 and it's in one color. I'm gonna click on this and see when I start getting features. I'm gonna choose my size and then I scroll down. Now here we go, product details. The Air Jordan Retro High remakes the classic sneaker, blah, blah, blah. So benefit, benefit, benefit. Mm -hmm. But then it goes into features below that. Leather offers durability and structure. Encapsulated air sole units provide lightweight cushioning. Solid rubber outsoles give you traction on a variety of services. Genuine leather, wings logo stamped on collar, stitched down swoosh logo, rubber traction, foam sole, and then it shows the, the color and the style number. All those are feature, feature, feature. And what I'm trying to highlight here is, again, this example, Nike leads with benefits yeah. loosely, but they're like, look at the cool picture, look at the, the new shoes in, in a cool visual way. You click it, when you want features, they are there. They are not gone completely. You need both, even when this shoe isn't really competing against any other shoe. People aren't taking the Nike OG retro high aqua black and white colored shoe and comparing it to an Under Armour shoe and trying to decide which one am I gonna buy? This is all built for people with a brand affinity for the Air Jordan lineup. Um, but you don't get to the features until you click down into it, but they are there. This is the point I'm making, they are there. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, the benefit's going to give you that strong hook. And that's great for marketing and selling, but for or the front end of marketing and selling. It's the features that for some people I don't, you know, I don't care. I don't care tell me the benefit. I have such a brand affinity and the reputation of that brand for me is enough. Yeah. Like I don't need your features. But for so many folks, the benefits bring you in to the fold, maybe kind of it's that hook. And you go, ooh, that feels good, or I like that idea. And it's mm -hmm. the features that really close the deal. I'll give you a quick example of shoes here. Uh, my wife and I were just shoe shopping uh, yesterday for some boots. And um, 
Didn't we you went, share a story of your wife buying boots? You shared that a few times ago. Says, your wife, she likes Brad's boots, wife loves boots. She, loves, she boots. loves her boots. Well, so it's funny because we, we bought her winter boots for winter because obviously Canada, mm-hmm. winter. And uh, if you don't have good winter boots here, then like you're going to buy another pair because you're going to get uh, a whole slew of problems if you don't have good winter mm-hmm. boots. And there are bad winter boots. Your feet, your mm-hmm. feet uh, get cold. Your toes will freeze. You know, they, the snow will melt. And so many problems. Get good winter boots. So we got her some good winter boots. But, you know, spring's here. The weather's nice. And you're like, well, you can't wear winter boots. And I could just buy some cheap boots here that I'm going to replace next year because I've worn a hole through the bottom because they were just cheaply made and they were cheap. Or, so we went to this store and um, it was a local store. And it was like, local to our area and the the boots so they had bigger brand names and stuff there but the real feature or the benefit here was canadian made boots and that's so rare like mm. probably in in america too but especially in canada because the population size is just different and yeah to have a canadian boot maker it's almost uh, unreal to me it's like mm. probably five and so i was like i love that you know, we saw these boots and there's a few and there's male boots, female boots. And so I was looking at some for me. I didn't get any this time, but I was looking and I was like, this is a, this is Canadian. And it says right here, it's like, I look at the tag to be like, well, where are you actually made? And it says like made in Canada. And I'm like, that's insane. Mm-hmm. Like I'm shocked. And I, that for me was a huge benefit. Canadian made, yeah. they really hammed it up and it was true. But then that's not enough for me to buy a boot. Cause you can have a Canadian made crappy boot. Yeah. It was genuine leather, uh, vegetable tanned here in, you know, the province next to us, uh, mm. handmade, hand stitched, genuine, like le- nothing's inauthentic, nothing's cheap. Mm. And it was a more expensive product, but I looked at the benefit. This is Canadian made. What? Mm-hmm. To look how beautiful it is. Look at the shape. You could see the hand stitching. You could see some of the imperfections. You can see the hand uh, vegetable dyeing of the, of the, the tanning of the leather, all these things. Yeah. Like, this is real. This is a real leather boot that a person here made. That's nuts. Yeah. And it's going to last yeah. literally a lifetime. So yeah, it backed it up with those features, hook me in with the benefit and kind of closes that deal with the features. Yeah. Yeah. I, th- you see it everywhere. Once you start looking at this, you're going to start seeing it everywhere. Benefits and features. Okay. Thank you for sharing that story. I was thinking while you, while you were sharing, Brad, is it where do the benefits end and the features start? Because you could say hand stitched. There's a benefit to that because it's it's not machine done. Or is there a benefit to machine stitched because it'll be like more heavy duty? Or is it benefit being or sorry, feature being this one is stitched with 78 stitches around the sole and instead of our competitors that just glue the sole onto the the shoe. Yeah, so it's like you can with I think with each they almost they're a pairing. It's like they they're a complementary. So like the the benefit hand stitched, you know, great, yeah. sounds nice, but why does that matter? Like because we're yeah. using a Vibram sole yeah, that okay. is hand inspected with by every single person. It's a quality yeah. sole with a lifetime guarantee, let's say, or a warranty of 20 years or yeah. whatever it is. And it's hand stitched. So it's hand inspected and nothing gets through without a yeah, quality inspection. It. So those soles are staying on the boot. And I've had boots where the soles just like, whoa, this is just fully open. And now yeah. snow or water is getting in through the bottom. Yeah. 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 Okay. Awesome. I agree. All right, I have up GoPro, another kind of innovative brand in their marketing. They went all in when they started to emerge 10, 15 years ago with the GoPro cameras, and it was all about capturing the action shot. Mm-hmm. It was the the first, you know, strap it to your helmet, the first big one that became, you know, synonymous with action photography and videography. You go to their homepage. And you would think that they would be marketing with a lot of benefit-driven stuff. On their homepage, they have three promos on here. One is for the Hero 12 Black. The next one is for camera deals. And the next one is a trade-up 
uh, discount if you trade in your old GoPro for a new GoPro. So feature on the trade up, feature on the camera deals, they're shopping, save, save money on Hero 10 and Hero 11. And then Hero 12 Black, they have a benefit driven sale where it says the official camera of fun. That's their benefit. If you're gonna have fun, this is the official camera of fun. When I click on Hero 12 Black, there's a big Shop Now button on that promo and I click on it and I am bombarded oh, with yeah. feature, 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 feature. They gave me one statement of benefit to get me to click and then it is feature ramrod. I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, maybe maybe 12 features listed here, everything from their speed of their camera to the battery life, to the megapixels, to the waterproof depth, all of those things are listed yeah. here. And not only are they listed in text, right below it, they have an icon for each one that they're highlighting it again, right below yeah. the feature listed there. So they're giving me the features in two different ways. The features are so important in their decision-making process for their customer that GoPro is ramrodding them two different ways, one for the visual person and one for the person who wants to read. And then we scroll down and I start seeing benefits. Mm -hmm. Does what only a GoPro can do and it's a cool photo. Jaw dropping 5.3K video showing a video playing behind it. Now that's feature driven with 5.3K. By yeah. the way, man, these freaking shots look insane. Yeah. They're so good. Yeah. Um, up to 8x slow-mo, so there's a promo for that. Ultra durable waterproof, waterproof up to 33 feet feature. So they're giving, they're giving you features in the video stabilization. They're giving you features three different ways on this page. Text written, icon driven, and then promo, promo, promo for all the features. Man, this is, if you, if GoPro listened to, this is this whole, this whole episode is about me venting about this. If GoPro it. listened to the people saying, sell benefits, not features, I don't, would they sell any cameras at all? Because they they're so wouldn't. driven on feature selling. It's like 90% of their copy is feature driven. If you had told them just to sell the benefits, it would be like capture the moment underwater. And you're like, okay, yeah. buy now. Like, no, they're like, and yeah. then here is an essay, nicely formatted, beautiful typography. It's a nice design. I, I could, I yeah. gotta say, but it's literally like uh, jargon, you know, specific to the product that you're, you want the hypersonic, whatever you want the stabilization, you want the underwater up to 33 feet. You want this, you want the Bluetooth to send the footage up to the boat above you. Like you want all this sort of stuff and it's all feature, 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 feature. Yeah. It, it only just, it led with a little bit of capture breathtaking moment underwater or whatever. Yeah. But the to rest is just click. like, yeah, to get yeah. you to click. It's a hook. Yeah. And then yeah. they actually sell you on what they want to sell you, which yeah. is the features. Yeah. Okay. So let's do one last example on this because I think we're starting to beat the dead horse on this. That's probably offensive to people too. Don't you don't actually beat horses, Nobody especially when dead they're dead. Horses. No. You do not do this. You do not they, do this. It is a phrase that people have used for a long time. Means you already no made the point. Now you're just hey, reiterating it over and over. I'm just protecting, protecting myself, yeah. protecting myself from any uh, hating. Things. Okay, we're, yeah. not, we're gonna beat the dead horse again one last time here on Red Bull. Red Bull is another one. And, and Red Bull is an interesting one because they don't even sell the product right. on their homepage. If you go Red Bull, okay, you got one promo for Red Bull that is related to the Red Bull drink. The rest of it is all related to this um, extreme sports culture mm -hmm. stuff this kind of aggressive sports red bulls gives you wings and this you know the de death defying kinds of stuff that's synonymous with red bull and mm -hmm. it's interesting here to me because red bull and gopro have a very overlapping Honest. customer base yeah. i assume the people who are out there doing extreme sports with their gopro on top of their head 
like to drink Red Bull because that's what Red Bulls feed me all the time. I, yeah. My assumption is that Red Bull is, is that, that type of audience that they want to be synonymous with. So if I scroll on their homepage, on the top, I have um, articles about Red Bull Culture Clash returns to New York City on June 1. Looks like a music concert. I have the, the um, BLX on Coachella, new album and growing up in LA. Sorry for being like an old man on this, but BLXST, what, what is this? What is this guy? I couldn't, I couldn't tell a, you. Is they this, don't market. Oh, okay, they don't market this guy's music okay. up in Canada. It's the first time seeing this. No, so I'm going to look him up. Maybe he's got some good songs. Sorry for those of you that know that and think I'm old. I'm running Wings for Life World Run 2024. Register now. None of these have anything to do with their product until I get one, two, three, four, five promos in on the carousel, and then it gives me the newest Red Bull Summer Edition like a Karuba Elderflower in the green Red Bull can. Yeah. So finally I get a product and that's out of one, two, three, four, five, six, seven promos on their homepage hero section. And one of them is the product and everything else is about the culture that of their yeah. target audience. Yeah. So it's completely emotion driven sales or um, synonymous sales. They want to be the synonymous drink attached to these types of lifestyle lifestyle. Yeah. That's what they're trying to do. So when do we get features on here? I get, you got three things on top in the nav. You have energy drinks, events, athletes, and TV. So four things on yeah. top events, athletes, and TV. Well, Red Bull does not sell athletes tv or events they sell energy drinks so yeah. i'm going to click on that and see when we get features from them are you on that energy drinks section yeah we got Brad? energy drinks yeah I, I pulled up a vpn so i'm on the american site yeah. red bull okay, energy good. drink gives you wings yes with all the eyes yeah i do like that yeah, kudos to red bull i love a good brand honestly red bull has done such a great job yeah um okay so red bull so there they give you a benefit statement Red Bull energy drink gives you wings. wings. Then we go down, we get another energy statement below that. Vitalizes body and mind. That's a benefit statement. Yep. We go down below that. Red Bull summer edition, um, Red Bull sea blue edition. A can has more than one life. This is about recycling. And then we get into some promos. So no real features mm -hmm. on this page. When do we get features? If I click on products, or here, I'll go down to this Amazon. I'm just gonna click on their main Red Bull drink. Okay. And the very first thing it says there is vitalizes body and mind. So there were a benefit again. Now we scroll down. Now we get ingredients, yeah. caffeine, taurine, B group, vitamins, sugars, waters. And they're all accordion based uh, navigation. So you can't even see the details until you click on caffeine. And then it doesn't even tell you the quantity of caffeine. It just says caffeine is widely used by ancient, ancient civilizations, civil, yeah. blah, blah, blah. It doesn't tell me the details of how much caffeine is in it. So let me click more in ingredients. Okay, if you click more in ingredients, then it tells you the details. So yeah. we're like three layers deep on their product pages and we finally get features. They are there for someone who wants it, but primarily Red Bull is a benefit-driven, emotion-driven, <laughs> lifestyle-driven, brand-selling style, which is a little different than what we mm -hmm. saw from the other three examples. Um, but you can get those features when you want them. They are much more buried in here, in kind of a neat way too. Red Bull yeah. has 80 milligrams of caffeine. Mm -hmm. Black tea has 57, dark chocolate 15. Cola, 45 milligrams. Homebrewed coffee, 95 milligrams. Interesting. Huh. Coffee house coffee, 180 milligrams. Man. Yeah, Americano. No wonder people like that. Yeah. Get all jacked up. You'd have to drink two and a half Red Bulls to yeah. get as much coffee as just a coffee house coffee. And it seems um, and they like... Do the they... same with sugars and taurine and everything. Yeah. And so they got the details, but because Red Bull 
a big part of it, like they have this product, but a big part of what they're selling is like the lifestyle and being, a, you know, associated with these, with this lifestyle. It's like, I mean, it makes sense that the bulk of their website, you know, it's more lifestyle driven and even on selling their primary products, which they certainly do, you know, they do lead a lot with that benefit driven and it's a simple product. I mean, you know, they're not selling, you know, rocket science here. Yeah. So when it comes to the features, like there's not a lot of features. So it's almost like in this sense, maybe it makes sense when they don't got a lot of features, you know, there's caffeine, maybe it's like sustainable sourced this and you know, okay. They, 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 but they've got like five features to the product. Yeah. Uh, do you so think, maybe leaning into that benefit is kind of what they have to do. Do you think that, um, and it would be, we don't have time today, but it would be interesting to do a comparison between Red Bull marketing and monster energy drink marketing. Cause those are kind of the two big name players in that space. Do you think that somebody chooses, I don't drink energy drinks. I, I drink caffeinated soda for my, my caffeine intake. But do you think people look at it and say, oh, I'm going to drink monster energy drink because there's 85 milligrams of caffeine and Red Bull only has 80. Do, I, do you, I don't what do think, you think? Oh, I would think that the first primary draw is the, the association with the brand. Are you holding the Red Bull or are you holding the monster? Mm. You know, I think that would be a big part. And Red Bull's got that one in the bag. Um, you think? I think so. I mean, yeah. maybe it might be a, a, a cultural thing like with different countries, but for me, like Red Bull's got that in the bag. Like they've got the, that one for terms of lifestyle. Monster to me seems like less of a pull, um, but maybe there's a part of, of their products, you know, we, we didn't dig into it and stuff, but maybe they have more features in terms of, you know, different options in terms of sugar or low calorie or, you know, different flavors, caffeine levels. Like maybe they have that, I'm not quite sure. And they can compete in terms of features. Mm -hmm. I just went on Monster and their 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 site is pretty minimalist here. Mm -hmm. There's not a lot of detail on their products in here and their homepage Monster Energy Drinks Green Hour. Yeah, this is uh somebody should reach out to Monster if you're listening to this podcast. I think that they've got a good enough brand that they could polish up some of this yeah. and have a little bit more effective website marketing. Yeah, it seems we'll like even their that. logo is in low res, it's blurry. Yeah, we'll save that for another time. Yeah. There's a lot that goes on behind the scenes. I don't like to bash on people's websites too much because there's so much going on behind the scenes with these brands that uh, these things can become low priority for them because it just isn't a source of sales for them. So they're, yeah. they're putting out fires other places and investing their energy other places. So. But there, needless to say, there there are definitely some easy things that you could see there. I agree with you. I think on Red Bull owning that market, it's the way GoPro owns that action camera market. And arguably, there are some cameras like um, I think it's Insta three hundred and sixty or something that yeah. do have more feature rich, but they don't own the benefit game yeah. on there. I think the summation of this is you got to have both and you can in creative services sales, you can think that, OK, I need to lead with some kind of benefit for my client. I need to tell them we're going to build a website for you. The website is going to help you generate 20 percent more sales. It is going to help you feel better about your brand online. It is going to look better than your competitors website. So your brand will be in more esteem. Benefit, benefit, benefit. And then when you create your proposal and contract, you're outlining, we're going to do a phase one where we do information architecture. We're going to detail out all your content, create a content strategy for your site. We go to phase two and we're going to do UX design and user journeys. We're going to know how people are going to flow through this site. We go to you, phase three and we're going to do user interface design. And you're going to get three rounds of comps and 
You're going to get feedback on those comps and we're going to make this style exactly what you want. Then we're going to build it on WordPress or Wix Studio and it's going to be backed by this multi-billion dollar hosting uh, data center and it's never going to go down. Uptime guarantee. You go down, feature, 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 feature. So when they compare your proposal to the other proposal, they're looking at it saying, huh, well, Brad's gonna give me, this content strategy seems logical, I need that. This other client, this other agency didn't even mention it. They're just gonna jump right into visual design, but UX design, I read an article about that UX design, I want some of that UX design. That's what they're gonna say to themselves yeah. for that. So you're giving them the features of working with you, but you're hooking them in to want to get the proposal at all through the benefits. And that's kind of how I see this applying to the industry that we're in, Brad. You have thoughts about that or things to add? A hundred percent. You, it kind of comes back to probably because I'm hungry, uh, selling the sizzle, but delivering the steak. And that's what it is. It's like you hook them in a, a small part of it, you know, the, the brand, the marketing, the nice lingo to kind of bring them in is, yeah. is the benefits. If you leave with a feature beyond boring, you know, yeah. but if you first make me want the thing with that hook, with that benefit driven uh, copy and then close the deal and deliver with the actual features, because that's, what's really going to matter. There is not just my imagination of, Oh man, it gives me wings or, yeah. or imagine, you know, this, like that's only a little sliver of it. You got to really deliver the goods and it's the same yeah. with creative services, you know, sure, you're selling websites with this platform, these the speed, this these infrastructures, global CDN, blah 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 blah. You have to kind of deliver that into it. But, you know, code it with the benefits, but know that you got to back that up. And backing it up is not yeah. by selling more benefits, it's by selling the features. Oh, I love that. Yes, yeah, so, so when they compare your your presentation, your proposal, your pitch or your contract, with the competitors and they're not listing those features, you look organized, you look structured, detailed, strategic, technical. You They'll see that in you and when they compare it to the loosely articulated version, you will shine and you will be the likely choice because you've shown them the features of working with you, not just the benefit. You gotta have both. This is the, the you gotta have both. I've wanted to make this content for a while. I was gonna make my own video of it, um, but I didn't know if I'd get riled up enough just talking to myself. You gotta have someone one. to bounce it so off. You got, you I'm got glad to... because the more I talk with you, the more pissed I get yeah. that this is even a thing. When we see the biggest brands in all the world selling, hooking with benefits and then selling on features. You I triggered have... Mike. I'm triggered. I triggered I'm probably him. gonna be pissed all night from this one. Got this them all worked up. That's yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think that's yeah. a good wrap to get you worked up and then just leave you high and dry to work through your emotions after we okay. leave. So thanks good. everybody for listening and for enjoying. <laughs> hopefully you enjoyed watching Mike get triggered as much as I'm I triggered. did. <laughs> thanks for listening. <laughs> if you love this episode and the show in general, make sure you leave us a review on your favorite podcast app. Always appreciated when you do that. Special shout out to our brand sponsor, Wix Studio, who not only sells with benefits, but really backs it up with features for sure. Mm. If you uh, want to learn more about the podcast or find out where you can get put our show in your ears, go to twopixelsoff.com and uh, we will see you in the next episode. Okay. Thank you. We'll see you all later. Cheers.